Um, you know, a lot of words um, being sort of thrown about on either side. And I suppose one of the questions for markets is if this does impact the oil price to the extent that oil got to $100 a barrel. And by the way, this is not a base case and not many people are saying that would happen. But even if it did, would it be as impactful to global growth as it has been in the past? Possibly it, it, not. Bloomberg Economics has done the analysis and said absolutely not. No, no. There's a lot of uh, a lot of stores around. People have banked up amounts. Plus also, of course, you have the surge in U.S. Uh, crude uh, production. So it, it's all, to a certain extent, perhaps less significant than it might have been. But the point is, it is still rhetoric. The moment we don't know what Iran is going to do in response. And until we do, it's very hard to price in anything. Absolutely. And in terms of the corporate space, of course, UBS restructuring its EMEA wealth management uh, with Iqbal Khan driving uh, changes, overhauling the most important division. Uh, we will get more into that throughout the show. But first, taking a look at the broader markets, two and a half minutes uh, into the equity market open here in Europe. Uh, this is how risk on looks for the stock 600. We're up four tenths of a percent, so up by the same amount that we closed down yesterday. So we're rebounding from two days of declines. Taking a look across regional equity benchmarks, the FTSE 100 up a tenth of a percent, the CAC 40 up four tenths of a percent, the DAX five tenths of a percent in the green, FTSE MIB in the green by the same amount, and the IBEX up four tenths of a percent. The S&P 500 eventually closed in the green yesterday, uh, basically recouping losses from earlier in the session. But futures point to perhaps a more muted session today. S&P and Dow futures struggling for direction and Nasdaq futures up just a tenth of a percent. So we're coming off some of the highs in those futures that we were seeing in the Asian session where we did see a lot of green with uh, Australia and Japan uh, trading higher by more than one percent. In terms of the 10-year Treasury yield, that edged up yesterday and we're steady today on a 180 handle. Really steady in European bond markets. The 10-year bond yield goes nowhere at negative 28. Uh, the 10-year gilt yield moves higher by three basis points, approaching an 80 handle. Uh, in the FX space, um, you're not seeing a whole lot of movement in G10. The dollar is pretty much unchanged. But what we've seen is some weakness uh, in the Aussie dollar. So part of that uh, is perhaps... Um risk appetite being dented um, by the Iranian bill designating the Pentagon as a terror group. That's some of the analysis. But also, of course, it was to do with poor job data out of Australia itself. And then taking a look at commodities, I mean, the real sort of flashpoint being oil, of course. We're seeing that retreat. WTI down eight tenths of a percent, 62.75. Brent crude moving towards $68 a barrel down nine tenths of a percent. Uh, gold actually was a little weaker when I looked during the Asian session, but we're edging up again now, up two tenths of a percent, $1,560. $68 an ounce. Right, let's have a look at what the stocks are to watch this morning. Bloomberg's Ksenia Galuchko has joined us in our London studio. So, Ksenia, good morning. Now, UBS, uh, they're splitting their European wealth unit into three, as we heard. Cuts of up to 500 jobs. How's it playing? That's right, yes. Starting off with some positive news, the stock is up almost 2% this morning. And just like you said, so they are separating their wealth management units, EMA division, into three regions, into Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. And they're simplifying their management structure. And as a result, this would lead to cuts of as many as 500 jobs in the wealth management business. Now, Aston Martin, they've had a, well, not a great morning. They said they're, it's been challenging trading and has led to rather lower sales. What's going on? That's right. Yes, some really painful news for Aston Martin. Now, the stock hasn't yet opened. Let's watch for that. Uh, that could be a really big move down. They are warning that profit fell and the CEO, Andy Palmer, even says that 2019 has been a very disappointing year. So the car maker is still struggling against economic uh, slowdown, uh, Brexit pressures and uh, um, other challenges that the auto sector is facing. Meanwhile, Premier Oil, now we talked about oil obviously in the light of what's going on in the Gulf, but there's a movement interesting between oil companies. Premier Oil agreeing to buy North Sea assets from BP for $625 million. That's, that's right, yes. And Premier Oil also like Aston Martin hasn't yet opened but traders were calling, oh actually no, it just opened Lucky us. So it's up eight, almost 8%, 7.6%. Very good news. Yes, they have agreed to buy assets in the North Sea to expand in their home market. And they're going to fund this purchase with a $500 million equity offering. Again, these uh, independent explorers, they're growing in the UK North Sea as US oil majors are exiting this region for other opportunities. All right, Ksenia, thanks very much. Ksenia Galuchko there with Stocks to Watch. We've also just had um, a breaking headline from China. China, the end December Forex reserves coming in at $3.1079 trillion. Uh, the estimate was 3.11, so just a touch below the 
estimate for those end of December forex reserves for China. But getting to our top stories, Iran is assessing 13 retaliation scenarios against the U.S. That's according to the country's semi-official news agency, FARS. It comes despite global calls for calm, with U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres urging all sides to exercise restraint following the American strike that killed Qasem Soleimani. But Iran's foreign minister won't be able to visit New York this week to discuss it. According to a person familiar, Mohammad Javad Zarif was denied a U.S. visa. Zarif had planned to attend a Security Council debate on multilateralism. Meanwhile, Washington sending more troops to the Middle East. Over 2,000 Marines are on their way from the Mediterranean. The U.S. is denying it's pulling out of Iraq, saying a draft letter to military officials to prepare to leave was released in error. The U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper says there's been no decision and there are no plans to leave. Part of the Brexit logjam will start being cleared today when British um, MPs return from holiday to start debating Boris Johnson's divorce deal. Bloomberg Brexit editor Ed Evans reports. Parliament returns on Tuesday and the government plans to get the withdrawal agreement bill, the actual piece of legislation taking Britain out of the EU on January 31st, through its remaining stages in the House of Commons by the end of the week. Unlike its predecessors, this bill is likely to enjoy a smooth passage, with Boris Johnson's government now enjoying an 80-seat majority, opposition amendments to amend the bill are almost certain to fail. The legislation will then go on to the House of Lords, which, by convention, doesn't oppose government bills included in party manifestos. In London, I'm Edward Evans for Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Now, a decade of renewal for the UK is what the Chancellor Sajid Javid is promising in his budget. He set the date for the budget for March the 11th as he readies the UK for its exit from the EU. The Treasury says it'll make good on pledges to cut taxes and revamp fiscal rules to allow the UK to increase borrowing for infrastructure investment. And do be sure to tune in to Bloomberg Radio today at noon for Bloomberg Westminster because we'll be talking to Adam Marshall, Director General of the British Chambers of Commerce. We'll be asking what business wants out of the new government and a post-Brexit trade deal is a big good piece on the terminal this morning talking about business wanting as smooth a ride as possible as Britain exits the EU. We'll be talking to him about that. All coming up on London DAB or later on Apple Podcasts or your preferred radio app. Back to the UBS story that we touched on in Stocks to Watch. UBS restructuring its private banking business, announcing new regional heads. The move follows a decision to dismantle the unit dedicated to the ultra-rich. According to an internal memo, the revamp will remove three levels of management uh, and speed up the lender's ability to lend to rich clients. UBS expects 500 job losses as part of the changes. Now, Tesla kicked off production in China this morning, making a major step in the chief executive office. So Elon Musk's global push for electric vehicle domination. Musk is, even as we speak, presiding over a ceremony uh, at a new multi-billion dollar plant near Shanghai. It's the first factory outside the U.S. The American company's handing over the first China-made Model 3 sedans to the public. Technically, deliveries began last week, but those were to employees. And Nissan says it'll take appropriate legal action against its former chairman, Carlos Ghosn. He fled Japan just over a week ago. Ghosn is planning to hold a news conference in Beirut tomorrow. He'll maintain his innocence and argue that his arrest for financial crimes was part of a conspiracy. Right, let's get the latest now in global news. Here's Bloomberg's Leanne Gerrans. Leanne, good morning. Roger, good morning. We start in Spain, where socialist leader Pedro Sanchez looks set to secure only the narrowest of majorities in a confidence vote in Parliament later today. He could find form a government which will end eight months of political gridlock. Bloomberg's Thomas Skulteri reports. Sanchez will now requires just a simple majority in the 350-seat Congress after the first round he lost on Sunday. is on track to win the 166 votes against the 165 votes of parties who oppose him. If he prevails, Spain will have its first coalition government since its return to democracy over four decades ago. In Madrid, Thomas Gualtieri, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. In Australia, firefighters are taking advantage of cooler weather to quell wildfires that have killed at least 24 people. Bloomberg's Jason Gale has all those details. Some 130 blazes across New South Wales are being fought by about 2,000 firefighters, the state's rural fire service said Tuesday. Containment efforts enabled residents in some of the worst fire-ravaged areas to return home. Searing temperatures and powerful winds at the weekend expanded the area raised to more than 5 million hectares across New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia alone. In Melbourne, Jason Gale, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. 
Now to Hong Kong, leader Carrie Lam says she hopes to work closely with China's new top official in the former British colony. Lam will meet later this week with newly appointed Liu Weinin. The choice of Liu, a Communist Party official known for carrying out President Xi's anti-corruption campaign, is seen as a signal for Beijing's intention to restore law and order. That's after six months of protests in the financial hub. And finally, Uber is working on a flying car with Hyundai. The two companies outlined their partnership at the CES Technology Conference. The air taxi will be able to take off and land vertically and seat up to four passengers. It will cruise of sp- at, or at speeds of up to 200 miles per hour and be fully electric. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on quick take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg Naira. Just a headline crossing the Bloomberg that Tokyo prosecutors <coughs> have obtained an arrest warrant for Carol Gone. Uh, that's according to Kyoto. Let's get to the sport now with William Esler. Arsenal are through to the fourth round of the FA Cup after a 1-0 win over Leeds. However, the home side were completely outplayed during the opening half at the Emirates Stadium. Arsenal will travel to Bournemouth in the next round. Elsewhere in the draw, FA Cup holders Manchester City will host Fulham. The lowest ranked side definitely through Northampton are at home to Derby. Last year's beaten finalists, Watford will play Wolves or Manchester United. That's if they get past Tranmere in their replay, while Liverpool go to Bristol City or Shrewsbury. Manchester City put their remarkable unbeaten League Cup record on the line tonight in the first leg of their semi-final. They haven't lost in the competition since October 2016, when they were knocked out by this evening's opponents, Manchester United. And England have a great chance of victory heading into the final day of the second test with South Africa. They have a lead of 311 runs in Cape Town, with the host resuming on 126 for two. Yesterday, England opener Dominic Sibley made his maiden test century, eventually finishing on 133 not out. William Esler there with all the latest sport and still ahead on Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. We're talking autos. So we're talking about Elon Musk attending a ceremony to mark the first deliveries of made in China vehicles. Plus, Nissan goes on the offensive following further details of Carlos Ghosn's escape from Japan. And we now know that the Japanese prosecutors have issued an arrest warrant for Ghosn's <coughs> wife, Carol Ghosn. So all these details we'll be talking about here on Daybreak Europe in just a moment. This is Bloomberg. Hey, y'all, Jeff Foxworthy here. Now, if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing over and over for 75 years, you might be Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. That's why I'm filling in for Smokey to switch things up, because there's a lot more to say. And I should know, because my grandfather was a firefighter, and one of the things he taught me is that the people that love the outdoors the most are often the ones accidentally starting wildfires, which means always (laughs) B-Y-O-B. No, bring your own bucket to the campfire. And be extra careful with things like burning yard trimmings. Don't just walk away, or chances are you might be starting a wildfire. So for the love of the outdoors, go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Innovalon is a leading provider of cloud-based platforms empowering data-driven healthcare. Leveraging deep connectivity, the data of billions of medical events, and advanced analytics, Innovalon empowers the achievement of improved clinical outcomes and financial performance for thousands of health insurance companies, hospitals, doctors, pharmacies, and pharmaceutical companies, and the millions of patients they serve every day. Innovalon. Data has a story to tell. We give it a voice. Learn more at Innovalon.com. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that our daughters have what they need to grow and learn. But that isn't the case for nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. that struggle with hunger. Childhood hunger is a heartbreaking reality that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and provides it to families and children in need. You can help kids in need in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council.
influential conversations from Bloomberg Television. Here's Taylor Riggs. Alphabet was upgraded to a buy from a hold at Pivotal Research. Analyst Michael Levine wrote that after a critical foundation year in 2019, the narrative continues to improve in 2020 and beyond. So Michael Levine, he joins us now. Michael, give me your take. How do we get from a 1397 to a 1650 on the stock? I think one of the things that was most compelling to us, Taylor, was both the uh, the change in regime with Sundar basically stepping in as the CEO and chairman, but, uh, but something that I, I think a lot of investors may have missed, his compensation agreement was filed with the SEC on December 20th, and what struck us most, most compellingly was... He basically is is compensated on the percentage of uh, the percentage differential that Google stock does relative to the S and P 100, and he's basically got a 45 million dollar tranche on plan for stock performance in 2021, a second 45 million for 20 through 22. So it's 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 pretty refreshing and encouraging to see alignment between management and stock performance from a company that is just historically taken a very uh, you know a very different approach to to working with the street hear more interviews like this one on bloomberg television streaming live on bloomberg.com and on the bloomberg mobile app or check your local cable listings markets headlines and breaking news 24 hours a day at bloomberg.com the bloomberg business app and on quick take by bloomberg this is a bloomberg business flash from bloomberg's european headquarters in london i'm roger hearing time for a bloomberg radio business flash now over to the first word breaking news desk in berlin for today's morning call here's richard jones richard good morning good morning roger it's a much more positive session for for equity markets in Asia today. The Nikkei 225 traded higher by one spot, 6%. The Kospi up 1%. Hang Seng up 3 tenths of 1%. And the Shanghai Composite up 7 tenths. The E-mini S&P and E-mini Nasdaq futures are both off their best intraday levels, trading 2 and 3 tenths of 1% higher, respectively. European equities are also trading higher at the open, with the Eurostoxx 50, the DAX, and the CAC Courant all up 8 to 9 tenths of 1%, with the FTSE 100 trading higher by one third of 1%. Turning to bond markets, the U.S. 10-year yield is steady at one spot, 8.1%, with the 10-year German bond yield one basis point higher at minus 0 spot, 2.8%. In the FX space, the Bloomberg dollar index is little changed, with the green back up against most of its G10 counterparts. Looking ahead to the European event risk calendar, the highlights today will be the release of Euro area retail sales for November and CPI data for December. Italy also releases its inflation data for December. That's it from me. For more macro breaking news, it's SQUA Go on the Bloomberg terminal. Roger. Thanks, Richard. That's the Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Leanne Garrens with more on what's going on around the world. Leanne. Roger, good morning. A British teenager found guilty of lying about being gang-raped in Cyprus has been handed a four-month suspended jail sentence. The 19-year-old hugged her family and started crying after a judge told her he was giving her a second chance. The woman insists she withdrew her allegations under pressure from the police. Harvey Weinstein has been charged with rape and sexual assault in California. That's as a former movie mogul awaits trial in New York. He was already facing as long as life in prison and now has to confront a new set of allegations against him. The LA district attorney says Weinstein used his power and influence to commit violent crimes. More charges may be pending. And finally, SpaceX has successfully launched more mini satellites using a Falcon 9 booster. The 60 satellites will join more than 100 others placed into orbit last year. SpaceX intends to launch thousands of small orbiters to provide worldwide internet. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on quick take by Bloomberg. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg Naira. Leanne, thank you so much. Now let's turn to cars and Elon Musk's moment of truth has arrived. This is Tesla delivers its first Chinese-made cars to the general public today. The Model 3 sedans were made in Shanghai at the car maker's first factory outside the U.S. For more, we're joined by Bloomberg Senior Editor for Global Business, Benedict Camel. Benny, uh, great to have you with us. So, it's sort of unfortunate that this is happening now, just as we're starting to see EV demand in China actually decline, which wasn't the case when this factory was first announced. So, can Musk attract enough buyers in China with a car that's also seen as relatively expensive? 
Yeah, so this is really a, a, a test case for uh, the market, but also for Tesla itself. As you say, they built this factory in record time. It took them less than a year, I remember, writing about uh, the, the groundbreaking ceremony early in January last year. And, and here we are with cars actually rolling off the site. So they couldn't have built this any faster, even if they tried. But yes, they're building these cars into a market that is in flux. Um, the demand isn't quite as robust as it once was. And they're coming into this market with a car that by Chinese standards is relatively expensive. Now, they will probably uh, have uh, local incentives, there's government incentives built in, there's tax breaks and all that. Well, they've already announced that the Model 3 will have a slightly lower price, so they're doing everything they can to make the car more attractive. The question really be, is, will it be enough uh, to get uh, enough buyers to make this uh, multi-billion dollar investment worthwhile? Yeah, because Benedict, they're not the only people in the field. I mean, there are uh, other competitors around um, who, who could make it even harder. Absolutely, and these are deep-pocketed uh, competitors around. Volkswagen uh, traditionally has had a very strong position in the Chinese market, and they are doing whatever they can with these deep pockets uh, to, to gain more ground in the EV race. Uh, they want to have more cars uh, powered by batteries than anyone else in the industry. Um, Daimler, BMW, everybody else is, is going out there, but uh, Musk is undeterred. He's taking uh, the fight to where the markets are. He's also coming back here uh, to Europe, to Berlin more specifically, where he plans to build a factory uh, for more uh, electric vehicles. Whether that factory will go up in, in the space of a year, I would uh, hesitate uh, to think that's going to happen. Uh, but still, you know, he'll have that global footprint and that will give him a, a serious edge. Mm. Let's also talk about another story um, that we're focused on today, uh, Benny, which is a Nissan saying it's going to take appropriate legal action against former chairman and CEO Carlos Ghosn for any harm caused to the company. We also uh, just got a headline um, that an arrest warrant uh, has been issued by Tokyo for his wife, uh, Carol. Does this suggest that authorities are now starting to look into uh, the help that Carlos Ghosn might have gotten in escaping Japan and going to Beirut? Yes, very much so. So Carlos Ghosn did say a couple of days ago that uh, his family was not involved in helping his flight. Now, it's what you would expect him to say to shield his family from any sort of legal repercussions. Um, and we've heard a lot about uh, who aided him. Uh, you know, there was paramilitary people involved, ex-military people, a lot of money, a lot of very complex planning that went into this flight uh, from, from Japan uh, back to Beirut. But uh, yes, what we're seeing very much so is, is now sort of the, the slow but steadily building fallout from this uh, surprise move. Uh, the Japanese legal authorities have, shall we say, woken up to this now. Uh, they are looking at what went wrong from that point of view, how they, they can prevent this from happening again. This is obviously the, the highest profile um, person who, who escaped their, their clutches, and, and they certainly don't want to see this happen again. Reminder to everyone, later this week, tomorrow or maybe Thursday, we'll have that crucial press conference uh, from Carlos Ghosn back in Beirut where he will hopefully tell us everything he has to say. And briefly, Benedict, I, mean, I guess it's a bit of impotent rage really from the Japanese authorities because there's no way that Carlos Ghosn or his wife are likely to return to face trial, is there? Yes, that's a very good way of putting it. Uh, so he will steer clear of Japan probably for the rest of his life. Uh, his wife already left the country uh, last year. She probably saw the writing on the wall when he was sort of rearrested, when he then eventually en ended up on house arrest. So it's safe to say that they will not be in Japan anytime soon or ever again in their lives. Benedict Camel, Bloomberg Senior Editor for Global Business. Thank you so much. And straight ahead on Bloomberg Daybreak Europe, UBS splits its wealth management unit into three, cutting up to 500 jobs and aiming two new division heads. More on the Swiss banks shake up next. Uh, taking a look at the equity market open 25 minutes into the open here. We're seeing risks come back on the table for global equities. There was a lot of green on the screen in Asia and the stock 600 continuing to gain up six tenths of a percent after two days of declines. But US futures flat. Turning slightly higher, this is Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Tesla's moment of truth has arrived. Electric Model 3 sedans are today available to the general public in China. CEO Elon Musk is at Tesla's Shanghai plant for a ceremony that takes place at 7 a.m. Eastern. Middle East tensions continue to hang over Wall Street, even as cooler heads prevail. Stocks are coming off a modest gain as investors weigh the Middle East situation against the strength of the U.S. economy. 
James Bevan at CCLA Investment Management says the road to higher ground may be bumpy. We could see another correction. My expectation is that that would then give way to another charge higher. Bevan says the market could pull back by 10%, which he would see as a buying opportunity. Privacy will be front and center today at the Consumer Electronics Show. Representatives of Apple and Facebook will be among the speakers at a Chief Privacy Officer Roundtable this afternoon. Larry Kofsky, Bloomberg Radio. In-depth analysis, concise reporting, need-to-know global business news. Around the world and across the markets, Bloomberg connects the dots for decision makers. Stay on top of today's headlines. Follow big breakthroughs in tech. Understand the latest political issues. See how the world's wealthiest are spending their money. Track what's happening in the markets and much more. Subscribe today to Bloomberg, the global standard for business reporting. Get it all at Bloomberg.com slash subscriptions. In today's volatile markets, investors need resilient portfolios to help handle the pressure. Through decades of expansions and recessions and changing interest rates, clients have turned to PIMCO to help them stay on course, no matter what course markets take. PIMCO, active fixed income solutions that aim to give investors an edge. All investments contain risk and may lose value. Investing in the bond market is subject to risks. Consult your investment professional prior to making an investment decision. Why has J... Boredom. Fitness enemy number one. So don't just run. 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 Mix it up. Skip. Run. Skip. Run. Give yourself a lift. Mix, Mix it up. Lift. Mix it up. Run. Lift. Splash. Skip. Lift. Run. It's crunch time. Skip. Mix, Mix it up. Run. Mix it up. Add a boxing class. Skip. Run. Splash. Skip. Run. Mix it up at Virgin Active and get stronger, fitter, faster. Join now for 12 months and pay nothing in January. T's and C's apply. Run. Mix, Mix it up. Skip. Mix it up. Run. Mix it Mix it Martin here loves being his own boss, but staying on top of all the tax rules used to drive him up the stud wall. This 31st of January self-assessment deadline, however, Martin won't be hitting the roof. Just a few buttons. He's using QuickBooks Self-Employed to make sure his tax bill is all above board. It tracks income and expenses, so he always knows what he owes. You could say he smashed it. Visit quickbooks.co.uk for details. Intuit QuickBooks. Hockey fans, the 2019-20 NHL season is here. And it tucks it home! And with this team, it's it's really fun to be a part of a team like that. And you can hear the action live on TuneIn Premium. From regular season action to the All-Star Game and through the Stanley Cup in June. Hear the home and away call for every game, for every team live. At home or on the go, never miss a game with the NHL on TuneIn Premium. Upgrade today. We can't make traffic move faster during rush hour. But we can help you catch up on the news with TuneIn, with live around-the-clock news from MSNBC. In the U.K., they're significantly worse. When the president gets up yeah. to the podium... CNBC got- and Fox News Talk. The Fox News poll sizing up the race for 2020 found that each of the five top... Dem- you can use your stop-and-go for good by staying in touch with the world. Search news to hear what's happening now. Get your favorite NBA team right here on TuneIn. A step back, deep three is up and in. Search NBA on TuneIn and hear all the action. The NBA lives on TuneIn. Want tune in to remind you when the big NFL game is about to get underway? Be sure notifications are allowed on your phone and search NFL on the TuneIn app. Find the game you want to hear under events and tap notify me. We'll let you know exactly when it's time to listen in for kickoff. B Digital Radio to New York Bloomberg 1130 to Washington DC Bloomberg 991 to Boston Bloomberg 1061 to San Francisco Bloomberg 960 and around the globe the Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Europe.
8.30 a.m. in London, 9.30 if you're listening in Paris, Frankfurt or Brussels. Good morning, everyone. I'm Neera Chahich. And I'm Roger Hearing, and you're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. 30 minutes into the equity market open, Roger. Today, we are seeing equities in the green in Europe, up six-tenths of a percent on the stock 600 after two days of declines across regional equity benchmarks. The FTSE 100 is actually flat. The CAC 40 higher by six-tenths of a percent. The DAX are leading gains up nine-tenths of a percent, closely followed by the FTSE MIB up eight-tenths of a percent and lagging slightly, but still in the green, the IBEX up three-tenths of a percent. The S&P 500 managed to eke out a small gain by the end of the session yesterday, having initially traded lower. S&P, Nasdaq and Dow futures were flat at the start of this hour, but they're now heading higher by at least two-tenths of a percent. The Nasdaq actually leading up almost four-tenths of a percent on those futures. The 10-year Treasury yields steady after some gains yesterday. Uh, we approach a 182 handle. We're seeing yields edge up in Europe now. Uh, they were flat for a lot of the session. 10-year bond yield up one and a half basis points, negative 27. The 10-year gilt yield up five basis points, uh, moving towards an 82 handle in FX, uh, looking at the Bloomberg dollar index. So as part of the general uh, move back towards risk on, we saw um, some dollar weakness yesterday, and we hold on to that today. In G10, uh, the Aussie dollar is the underperformer, down five-tenths of a percent. Interesting. You could see that as perhaps one aspect of risk on off, but also it's to do with jobs data out of Australia. The pound actually leading gains, uh, seeing quite a bit of strength there. It's actually the only uh, G10 currency firmly in the green cable now, up two tenths of a percent higher for a second day, above 132. And then commodities, of course, oil, the main thing we've been focusing on with the Middle East tensions, pulling back a bit today, down six tenths of a percent on WTI, 62.90. Brent trading at 68.44, down seven tenths of a percent, and gold steady. Now on to some of today's top stories. Iran is assessing 13 retaliation scenarios against the U.S., according to the country's semi-official news agency, FARS. It comes as Washington is sending more troops to the Middle East. Over 2,000 Marines are on their way from the Mediterranean. The U.S. is denying it's pulling out of Iraq, saying a draft letter to prepare to leave Iraq was released in error. The U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper says there is no decision and as yet no plans to leave. Here in the U.K., the next Next budget will be on the 11th of March. Chancellor Sajid Javid says it'll reveal how the country will take advantage of what he called the huge opportunities of Brexit as well as some other areas. How are we going to help hardworking people in particular, uh, especially with the cost of living, and how we're going to level up across the entire country, spread opportunity, including with more investment, including fantastic infrastructure projects. The Treasury says it'll make good on pledges to cut taxes and revamp fiscal rules that's allowed the UK to increase borrowing for infrastructure investment. China's targeting internet giants in an overhaul of antitrust law. It potentially gives regulators the power to rein in the country's increasingly dominant tech companies. If they've been found to have violated the law, they could be fined as much as 10% of their revenue. The proposal follows heightened scrutiny of tech companies all around the world. And UBS is restructuring its private banking business, announcing new regional heads. So the revamp will break apart the EMEA private banking business led by Crystal Novakovic. Uh, and that will give uh, Caroline Kunet responsibility for Central and Eastern Europe. With Ali Janoudi leading the Middle East and Africa business, Crystal Novakovic will continue to head up West Europe. The move follows a decision to dismantle the unit dedicated to the ultra-rich. According to an internal memo, the revamp will remove three levels of management and speed up the lender's ability to lend to rich clients. UBS expects 500 job losses as part of the changes. Well, let's get some more on this story. Let's go live to Zurich, where Bloomberg Swiss finance reporter Patrick Winters is standing by. So, Patrick, good morning to you. Now, how big a move, how big a change is this for UBS? Good morning, uh, Roger, and uh, good morning, Nera. I mean, I would say it's one of the biggest shakeups in the private banking um, unit in, in several years, and it's part of a shift which gives more power to the regions um, and, and tries uh, to get clients using more services from the rest of the bank. I think it's definitely something you can attribute to Iqbal Khan, the, the kind of star uh, private banker, which UBS hired from, from Credit Suisse. I mean, as part of the shakeup, they're going to split um, uh, Europe, the Middle East, and Africa into three regions. Um, then they're going to remove three levels uh, of management globally uh, and you know, up to 500 job cuts. So for UBS, which has often been seen as one of these slow oil tankers, a hard-to-move bank, um, it's definitely a pretty significant um, change. It's also mm-hmm. a shift from what uh, uh, you know, UBS announced two years ago, which is when, when they wanted to, to move private banking into one big unit. They seem to be going the opposite way now.
Yeah, and uh, Patrick, um, Iqbal Khan previously indicated that UBS could make uh, what he called quick wins by increasing lending, and that's a strategy he used at his former employer, Credit Suisse, as well. So how exactly in the memo and elsewhere um, do they actually plan to kind of boost this lending uh, to rich clients? What's the process? I think what they want to do is, is uh, uh, across wealth management and investment banking, get those two divisions working better together to lend well uh, for rich clients and to, uh, to stop the obstacles uh, which, which, which authorize the lending process. So I think the whole, the whole uh, uh, thinking behind Iqbal's plan was that there were too many people standing in the way of, of a loan being authorized, and now they're going to smooth that process out. Of course, the upshot is that um, if you're one of these uh, people who was in the middle, then uh, you now might be losing your job. So it's not going to be um, uh, uh, definitely a move that's going to be uh, uh, approved um, and, and it's not one which everyone's going to love. Well, no, and I was going to say one person who probably won't be Crystal Novakovic because it's his, his position has been somewhat downgraded as a result of this. Is it significant, do you think? Her position has been uh, downgraded. Um, you, know, you could say it's a, it's a slightly smaller position now, but I think it's it's one of these corporate restructurings which uh, just happens at these banks every couple of years. Um, I mean, I, I, I would rather uh, than focusing, uh, you know, on, on on her more more focus on, on on the way that Iqbal's now changing the bank, molding it in a in the same way that, that he molded Credit Suisse. He's using many of the same tactics, and basically, it seems to me he's he's uh, uh, creating a a mini Credit Suisse wealth management within UBS. Great to have you with us. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Patrick Winters, uh, our Swiss finance reporter, joining us from Zurich. Uh, and we just have um, some breaking headlines to get to as well on the Bloomberg. Yes, it's coming in from uh, from Aston Martin because uh, we, we reported earlier, of course, that they had uh, some problems with regard to their trading situation and that their bonds are now fallen the most since October after their earnings slump. That headline coming across the terminal in the last few moments. And in terms of the share price reaction, uh, which we we did cover as well at the top of the show. Quite a big drop. Uh, you're looking at a drop of 15% right now on Aston Martin shares. Let's get to the world news now with Leanne Gerrans. Leanne. Good morning, Neira. Starting in Spain, where socialist leader Pedro Sanchez looks set to secure only the narrowest of majorities in a confidence vote in Parliament later today. He could finally form a government which will end eight months of political gridlock. Sanchez's socialists are expected to win by just one vote if he prevails. Spain will have its first coalition government since its return to democracy over four decades ago. Crossing over to Hong Kong, leader Carrie Lam says she hopes to work closely with China's new top local official in the former British colony. Bloomberg's Ian Marlowe has all the latest. Lam said Tuesday she would meet later this week with Luo Huining, who the Chinese government appointed Saturday to replace former Hong Kong liaison office director Wang Jimin. The choice of Luo, a Communist Party official known for executing President Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign, was seen as a signal of Beijing's intention to restore law and order in Hong Kong after more than six months of protests. In Hong Kong, Ian Marlow, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. In southeastern Australia, firefighters are taking advantage of cooler weather to try to contain wildfires. At least 24 people have died so far. In New South Wales, about 1,600 homes have been destroyed. The fires are expected to burn for months to come. And finally, Impossible Foods is debuting two new fake meat products at CES in Las Vegas. The Impossible Pork and Impossible Sausage. The move runs up the company's rivalry with Beyond Meat. It sees China as key to its future plans. Our mission is global, and with 40% of meat being consumed in Asia, we are very focused on ensuring we can enter major markets like China as soon as possible. That was David Lee, the Impossible Food CFO, speaking there. Global news 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg. Roger. Leanne, thank you. Now with the morning sport, here's William Esler. Arsenal are through to the fourth round of the FA Cup after a 1-0 win over Leeds. However, the home side were completely outplayed during the opening half at the Emirates Stadium. Arsenal will travel to Bournemouth in the next round. Elsewhere in the draw, FA Cup holders Manchester City will host Fulham. The lowest-ranked side definitely through Northampton, are at home to Derby. Last year's beaten finalists, Watford will play Wolves or Manchester United. That's if they get past Tranmere in their replay, while Liverpool go to Bristol City or Shrewsbury. 
Manchester City put their remarkable unbeaten League Cup record on the line tonight in the first leg of their semi-final. They haven't lost in the competition since October 2016, when they were knocked out by this evening's opponents, Manchester United. And England have a great chance of victory heading into the final day of the second test with South Africa. They have a lead of 311 runs in Cape Town, with the host resuming on 126 for two. Yesterday, England opener Dominic Sibley made his maiden test century, eventually finishing on 133 not out. That is your European sport. Coming up on Bloomberg Daybreak Europe, as a bit of risk on comes back to global markets, James Affey, Senior Investment Manager at Aberdeen Standard Investments, joins us next. This is Bloomberg. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky? Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me, but I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Are you one of those people who thinks it's okay to drive stone? I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You end up driving below the speed limit? It's no big deal, right? Wrong. The truth is, your reaction time slow way down when you're high. You not only put yourself in danger, but everyone around you. Talk about a buzzkill. Stop kidding yourself. It's not okay to drive high. If you've been using marijuana in any form, do not get behind the wheel. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, get a DUI. Paid for by NHTSA. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their businesses strategically, yet the most competitive managers in the market know with the right partner and a flexible operating system, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. I'm Steve Meyer, President of SEI's Investment Manager Services. At SEI, we understand the emerging forces that will define success for asset managers and what firms will need to compete tomorrow. That's why we continually optimize SCI's global operating platform. If your business requires greater agility, our advanced technology, integrated best-in-class systems, and multi-asset expertise can be your catalyst for business transformation. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at seic.com slash seize change. Business is constantly evolving. Boredom. Fitness enemy number one. So don't just run, run, run. Mix it up, skip, run, skip, run. Give yourself a lift, mix, mix it up, lift, mix it up, run, lift, splash, skip, lift, run. It's crunch time. Skip, mix, mix it up, run, mix it up. Add a boxing class. Skip, run, splash, skip, run. Mix it up at Virgin Active and get stronger, fitter, faster. Join now for 12 months and pay nothing in January. T's and C's apply. Run, mix, mix it up, skip, mix it run, mix it, mix it. Want tune in to remind you when the big NFL game is about to get underway? Be sure notifications are allowed on your phone and search NFL on the TuneIn app. Find the game you want to hear under events and tap notify me. We'll let you know exactly when it's time to listen in for kickoff. Hey, NFL fan, can't watch the game? Can't be there? No biggie. Hot. With your TuneIn Premium membership, you already have an all-access pass to every team and every game in the league. Amazing, right? Steps up, floats it towards at the goal line, it's intercepted! Listen live as the action unfolds, or on demand when you can. Anytime, anywhere, all season long. Right it is caught, it is in for the right side for the touchdown. Again. Search NFL today. Right now, instead of hearing this, you could be listening to the music that keeps you moving with TuneIn Premium. Find today's biggest songs and all of your favorites commercial-free. Visit TuneIn.com slash premium to upgrade. Want to hear about the latest and greatest things to listen to on TuneIn? For reminders of the biggest live sports games, debates, and breaking news stories, follow at TuneIn on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay connected with the audio that matters to you. You love TuneIn for live breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on-demand news shows on TuneIn. 
Did you know your favorite radio stations are in your pocket? Yes, the TuneIn app lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio anywhere you want. To see all the stations broadcasting in your area, find the local radio section on the home screen. Keep it local with TuneIn. The puck drops. Twelve players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. TuneIn brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on TuneIn. We can't make traffic move faster during rush hour. But we can help you catch up on the news with TuneIn. With live around-the-clock news from MSNBC. In the UK, they're significantly worse. When the president gets up to the podium... CNBC and Fox News Talk... The Fox News poll sizing up the race for 2020 found that each of the five top... You can use your stop and go for good by staying in touch with the world. Search news to hear what's happening now. Pascal gobbles up the rebound and slams it down. Catch your favorite NBA team right here on TuneIn. A step back, deep three is up and in. Search NBA on TuneIn and hear all the action. The NBA lives on TuneIn. Hear every play of the NFL playoffs live with the NFL on TuneIn Premium. The divisional round kicks off Saturday at 4.35 p.m. Eastern when the Vikings travel across country to take on the 49ers in an NFC showdown in Santa Clara. The action continues at 8.15 as the Ravens host the Tennessee Titans in Baltimore. On Sunday, listen live beginning at 3.05 Eastern as the Texans and Chiefs square off in Kansas City, followed by the Seahawks and Packers at 6.40 in Green Bay. The excitement of the NFL playoffs is on TuneIn Premium. Upgrade today. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on QuickTake by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg's European headquarters in London, I'm Roger Hearing with this Bloomberg Radio Business Flash. And it has to be said, after the pessimism of yesterday, uh, across the board pretty much, 45 minutes into the European opening, it's a risk on mood stock 600 up 6 tenths of 1%, the uh, CAC up 6 tenths of 1%, the DAX up almost 1%, the IBEX up 3 tenths of 1%. Only the FTSE 100, in fact, is uh, hovering quite low at the moment, barely moved, actually. Uh, Looking to the US futures, earlier they were flat. But S&P, Dow and Nasdaq all moving forward. S&P up a quarter of 1%. Dow the same. Nasdaq up three-tenths of 1%. A sense perhaps that the problems that were envisaged yesterday in terms of the Washington-Tehran relationship may be at least on hold, although there was a bit of tension after the announcement by the FARS news agency in Iran of possible 13 retaliation scenarios by Iran. That doesn't seem to have pulled things down at the moment. Looking to oil, uh, currently 62.9%. 9.9 is WTI, that's down four tenths of 1%. Brent crude, 68.58, down almost half of 1%. Again, reaction to the feeling perhaps that oil's rise yesterday was perhaps a little premature. Also keeping an eye, of course, on the dollar, which is barely moved. Uh, the yen, which gained very much, of course, in the tension, uh, is at the moment hovering pretty much unmoved, 108.47. And to Bloomberg Business Flash, now here's Leanne Garrens with more on what's going on around the world. Leanne. Roger, good morning. A British teenager found guilty of lying about being raped in Cyprus can now return home after being handed a four-month suspended prison sentence. The 19-year-old has been stuck there after claiming she was targeted in a hotel last July. She then withdrew her allegations but insists she only did so after being pressured by police. In the US, former National Security Advisor John Bolton says he will testify in the impeachment trial if he's subpoenaed. It injects fresh drama into the proceedings and complicates the Senate's leadership plans for a swift trial with no witnesses. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi hasn't yet passed the two articles of impeachment to the Senate. And finally, a study has found running a marathon for the very first time can reverse the effects of aging on your blood vessels by almost four years. Researchers have discovered people who tackled the London Marathon had a significant reduction in artery stiffness and blood pressure, cutting their chances of having a heart attack or a stroke. Global News 20 24 hours a day on air and on quick take by Bloomberg. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg Neira. Oh, Leanne, we might disagree on this because... I see it can reverse the effects of aging on your blood vessels, but what about the aging of your joints? 
You're younger by four years in your blood, but then you suffer a whole lifetime of joint pain and issues. So I'm very anti-running. I'm very yeah. anti-running. Well, I'm actually quite pro-running because I do think that <laughs> That's it why is. I knew we'd disagree. <laughs> but sometimes I do, I do wonder about the distance of a marathon because yeah. marathons are very hard on the body and you're right, they do take a toll on the joints. But what they're saying is training. So getting the blood going through the blood, the body, the, you know, the blood vessels, there's, it just makes everything more elastic inside. I... But sadly, I thought it would help for wrinkles when I first yeah. saw the headline. It would stop. No, but that's the other thing. Oh that's better stop running. No, Leanne, that's the other thing. Running is very aging for the face because you're outside with the wind and rain exactly. hitting your face. Exactly. So is the best true? thing is to rest your limbs <laughs> on the sofa, okay? Rest your wrinkles because you're out of the sun and it all balances out and then you look ten years younger like me. Like me. Your blood vessels just stiffen. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm sure our guest will have some thoughts on this. James Athey, Senior Investment Manager at Aberdeen Standard Investments. He knows a thing or two about exercise and injuries. James, happy New Year. New Year. I've got a much, much better way to try and reduce the age of your cardiovascular uh -huh. system, and that is to get a dog. Oh, I've got because, two dogs. because having a dog and loving your dog releases happy hormones, which are actually excellent for reparation of the cardiovascular system. So it's been shown, for example, that if you have a heart attack and you own a dog, yeah. you're much, much less likely to have a repeat heart attack within the next 12 months versus somebody who has a heart attack and doesn't have a dog. Very interesting. So Just don't go, go, don't go running a with a dog. Dogs That's all. Yes, people actually do <laughs> yeah, go no, running with their running doggy. With my two yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just go in different directions. My dogs are useless at that because they don't have any speed between full-on greyhound and walking, so unless oh you want to sprint everywhere on your jog. <laughs> well, I try and take my cat for a walk, and it just looks at me. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm anti the... those people who take the cat to the park, Roger. <laughs> All right. Let's, Do you not think we should talk about Mark? Yes, just exactly. I was I mean, just going to say... <laughs> I blame James. He took us in a different direction. So Absolutely. James, I apologise. Getting that, back to the different directions of markets at the start of this sure. year, we started buoyant, and then we were risk off, and then we sort of moderate a bit now. Risk is back on. Let's just talk, talk about the Middle East tensions and sure. and how this might impact how you view twenty twenty. You were already quite gloomy, to yeah. be fair, by the end of twenty nineteen. That's a very kind does, way of putting yes, it. Thank you. Does, does this add to your gloom, or is this more idiosyncratic? It definitely does have the potential to add mm. to the gloom. I mean, we've seen just in the last you know, two trading sessions how quickly the market can swing from one side of the boat to the other. You know, can the fear and greedometer can sort of fluctuate wildly from one end of the extreme to the other. I think realistically it's difficult for markets to price this today. Yeah. I'm surprised how quickly they've completely put it aside, but I think that's more, more to do with the prevailing central bank environment than it is really the market's desirability to price this risk. But absolutely Absolutely. Um, escalating tensions, direct conflict, um, interruption of, of passage through the, the Straits of Hormuz, a meaningful and, and longer lasting spike in the oil price and commodity prices in general. All of these have the potential to not be a fantastic macroeconomic backdrop. Mm. But we were talking to another, another guest earlier, so they said, well, the fundamentals actually, whatever happens pretty much, are still strong going into 2020. Uh, the things that we liked before, we still like. And the impact, particularly on oil, less than it was. Uh, I mean, the US has its own, you know, the, the crude oil supplies. So, so in, in, and the supplies that have been put aside, the reserves are there. I mean, are we perhaps worrying too much? Well, the market clearly isn't worrying too much because it's hardly moved at all, at least mm. in terms of risk markets. And I'd say that the oil price spike that we've seen is pretty contained. It really, that doesn't look like a dramatic, um, you know, market expectation for material disruption to supply. And the shale point, absolutely, I would strongly agree with. The, the role of OPEC as global swing producer is just far less than it ever used to be. And, and that is almost entirely down to, to the production numbers we're seeing from US shale fields. So, yes, absolutely, I think there is some truth to that. Whether or not the fundamentals are strong, I think you really have to close one eye and really want to see that because just the sheer quantity of credit growth that's been required to make pretty meagre gains in terms of GDP growth and declines in manufacturing that we've already seen and disruption that we continue to see in terms of supply chains first and foremost, but I think it's, it's more than that. There's a lot going on which is disruptive in terms of um, global supply and demand, certainly within manufacturing sectors. And essentially in the US, which is the US consumer is now the mm. biggest 
engine of growth which is still going globally and unemployment is already at three and a half and the labour market is tight and the beige book is telling you that it's not easy to find people to hire even if you want to hire and actually survey data is telling you that people want to hire less and less. Now that mm. doesn't feel like a particularly strong point to say that the fundamentals are strong when you've had a you know, 10, 11 year expansion um, yeah. already in the rear view mirror. And it's these fundamentals um, that are concerning Goldman strategists who've basically said that the sort of Santa-like rally we had at the start of last year, at least in the near term, in the next one or two months, it's not going to sustain because a lot of the growth has already been priced in to risk assets. And they say that whereas 2019 monetary policy was the key market driver, why we saw equities and bonds rise in tandem, 2020 is going to be all about growth. If that's the case, what kind of returns do we see in 2020 for bond markets? I mean, for bond markets, you presume, that depends on whether you think that's going to be good growth or bad growth. Yeah. If it's all about growth, you know, it's very difficult to believe that it's going to be all about negative growth and central banks are going to sit idly by. Certainly not the Federal Reserve. They still mm. have room just to get to zero. They don't even need to engage in unconventional policy until they get to zero. Uh, and we've seen already that they've been throwing liquidity into the system with um, you know, impunity to all, to all intents and purposes. So I struggle to believe that central banks are out of the picture. I know mm. that there's less room in a lot of places and a lot of noise is emanating from these institutions. Thankfully, finally, at long last, start to recognise that maybe they are not the solution to this problem and maybe actually they're, they're increasingly part of the problem. But the, the, you know, the reality is that if growth numbers decline, if inflation declines, they're, they're sort of quote-unquote mandated to, to intervene, to step in and to do what they can with, with the limited toolkit in front of them. So I, I am cautious on growth. That's not to say that I think the recession starts in 2020, but I don't think we get anything better than we've already seen in this cycle. I think we're on the path to that recession. And I think central banks are now trapped, 100% trapped in terms of their provision of stimulus and support to financial markets, forget the economy. And that means that bonds are going to struggle to sell off in, in almost any scenario for mm. any meaningful sort of distance. So I still think you're yeah, asymmetrically um, you know, biased to own duration. James, let me bring you back to what's very local, in a sense. Uh, we've got uh, Sajid Javid, the Chancellor, talking about a decade of growth in his budget coming up March the 11th. Uh, we are moving into a period when, in theory, at least the logjam over Brexit will break. What ambitions do you have for, for UK equities going forward this year? I think they could be the best of a not-great bunch. Again, going back to where the equity market is priced. Europe has its own specific issues, and they are to some degree priced. The US has less issues, and therefore there's less structural discount priced, but actually I think there's a heck of a lot of financial engineering priced in US equities, so I think they're ridiculously expensive. The UK has been discounted because of fears over structural, permanent damage to the UK economy. That was always utter nonsense, and I can now see that there is evidence that that message from, from many quarters is softening as we recognize that, you know, it's, it never was the catastrophe that it was forecast to be, but actually that there's probably a decent path forward for the UK PLC. So looking at the FTSE 100, given the global mm -hmm. nature of its revenue base, it's complicated because of the currency yeah. move. But looking at the broader FTSE, it looks to me like it will outperform its peers. James Athey, Senior Investment Manager at Aberdeen Standard Investments. Great to have you with us this morning. And we're still in the green uh, on the stock 600. An hour into the open, this is Bloomberg. Family properties and investments have been passed to the next generation. Boredom, fitness enemy number one. So don't just run, run, run. Mix it up, skip, run, skip, run. Give yourself a lift, mix, mix it up, lift, mix it up, run, lift, splash, skip, lift, run. It's crunch time, skip, mix, mix it up, run, mix it up. Add a boxing class, skip, run, splash, skip, run. Mix it up at Virgin Active and get stronger, fitter, faster. Join now for 12 months and pay nothing in January. T's and C's apply. Run, mix, mix it up, skip, mix it run, mix it, mix it. Do you remember when it... Here at Tesco, we're celebrating over 100 years of great value with even more great prices that take you back. Like a 500 gram tub of Anchor Salted Spreadable from £3.50 to just £2. All this week, at Tesco. Selected largest stores subject to availability off friends 14th of January. You might already know that TuneIn allows you to listen to all the pro sports leagues wherever you go. But did you know TuneIn is also home to the wide world of college sports? Open three, DeAndre Hunter got it! 
Hand off Carruthers. Big hole right side. He leaps and he surges in. Touchdown. From live college football, basketball, and baseball games to podcasts and coaches shows fueling your love for the game and your school. And the best part is it's all free. Search college sports to find your team or league. Today at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. What we're now seeing for the first time is this facade of absolute unity beginning to break down in the EU. We expect that there will be some type of slowdown recession beyond 2019. The European banking system, although recovering, hasn't recovered, and there are areas of fragility. We've seen this before, trade talks that lead nowhere and then tariffs. We just swing from one to the other and markets get caught in the middle. Bloomberg Daybreak Europe with Anna Edwards and Matt Miller on Bloomberg Radio. Good morning from London. I'm Anna Edwards. And from Berlin, I'm Matt Miller. You're listening to Daybreak Europe on London, DAB Digital Radio. Uh, now, Matt, uh, we check the markets every 15 minutes here on Bloomberg uh, Radio. And European equity markets putting in some modest gains this morning. U.S. futures pointing modestly higher. Uh, this after we saw a strong session in the United States, at least the session turning tail during the U.S. trading day yesterday, putting in some gains. Uh, markets deciding they are going to focus. Amazing. It Isn't was amazing. It? No, I just think it's pretty amazing. And considering, um, you know, uh, just uh, about an hour ago, we got those headlines from the Iranian news agency Fars. They said yes. Iran uh, has 13 scenarios laid out um, that it could choose from to retaliate. And even the weakest among those scenarios would be an historic nightmare. Nonetheless, the DAX is up 130 points right now. It's up a full percent and U.S. futures are still gaining. Yeah, I mean, I suppose um, use of language such as this is not uncommon, is it, when you listen to Iran and they told us already that they would respond, they would retaliate. seems amazing that markets decided yesterday that they could put those concerns around retaliation aside for a day and focus instead on tech stocks rallying. But that's where we find ourselves. We just have to wait and see, don't wait and watch, don't we, to see what kind of retaliation we get from Iran. Uh, let's uh, bring into the conversation then markets pairing earlier gains after these comments from Iran's semi-official news agency, Far. Uh, saying that Tehran is assessing, th assessing 13 retaliation scenarios against the U.S. Uh, let's bring into the conversation uh, Bloomberg reporter Simone Foxman, who joins us now uh, from Doha. Uh, Simone, give us the latest then. What have we heard from Iran? Uh, good morning, Anna and Matt. Yes, well, look, we're hearing essentially the same um, uh, language that we normally do, this this high-level, high, uh, high level, very threatening language. Um, but we just care a little bit more right now, I think, than we normally do. In addition to uh, these 13 uh, potential retaliation scenarios, um, we are you know, hearing uh, that, uh, that we're seeing, excuse me, the, the, the funeral procession for uh, Qasem Soleimani continue uh, moving to his hometown of Kerman. Um, and generally, we're, we're seeing this move to a new phase, right? Um, this, the, I guess, immediate sadness is over. This has sort of rallied um, some Iranian people around this important figure. Uh, and now it, it, what remains to be seen is how this is going to be carried out. Where, where do you uh, see the Iraq-Iran relationship here? Because it seemed these once mortal enemies, it seems that they, on the one hand, may be getting closer together. On the other hand, it is apparently only the Shias in Iraq who have uh, voted to throw out the U.S. Uh, armed forces. You know, look, I, I think we're seeing, I think we're seeing a, a stronger relationship between the two, um, and and that's not just because you know this is you know somewhat sectarian um, in nature. It's also because there's been a general distrust of the United States in the region and its role in the region. Um, certainly, the invasion of Iraq setting and and some later decisions by the U.S. government sort of setting the stage um, for the rise of ISIS and the consequences uh, that followed. Uh, I would also point out that. The other Gulf states are trying to make their own uh, policy 
uh, they are flying around, speaking to different dignitaries, speaking to Iraq, uh, going to Tehran, um, and they are trying also to lead uh, a, a maybe different narrative than the U.S. Uh, in the region to try and just offer a little bit more context than than the the sort of one direction Iran uh, Iran response to this. Simone, thank you very much. Bloomberg reporter Simone Foxman joining us from uh, from the region, from the Middle East, from Doha, in fact, to uh, give us analysis of the most recent developments. Let's talk about how the markets have been responding here. Bloomberg opinion columnist Marcus Ashworth joins us now. Uh, give us your thoughts, Marcus, on the way that the market seemed yesterday to take the opportunity to buy risk assets, uh, even though this threat of retaliation still very much hangs over markets. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't. I think we've seen this movie before, and uh, the real- simple reality is that Iran's been caught out, it's been um, found out, and its ability to manoeuvre has been drastically reduced. Regardless of all the rhetoric you're going to get out of the Iranians, they are in a very bad situation here. They've had their uh, head chopped off, and uh, they've been exposed for what, exactly what they've been getting away with, literally for murder for the last uh, few decades. And they don't really have much room to manoeuvre. And the point is, is that, yes, they can, they can threaten a few things and, and then some, some nasty stuff can happen. But the practical reality to world markets is this is a very localised situation. Oil is the obvious one. It isn't. However, um, both Saudi and particularly Shell oil producers in the States can turn on the taps very quickly. And they will do so with an oil price at over 70. Therefore, people do not expect oil price in this current situation with the world global economy pretty weak to uh, have a situation where, it, well, you know, in the previous times it might have gone above 100 here. So the practical reality here is oil is fairly well contained, and for the rest of markets, this is a localised situation. Now, obviously, these things can get worse, but I think most markets at the start of the year, when new money's coming in, are focusing on, on a longer-term picture, and they use it as a, as a perfect opportunity to get a, a, a nominal bargain. We see, I love, obviously, these kind of conspiracy theory assets, um, these zero hedge assets like gold and to some extent Bitcoin, and they've been on a tear lately. The the geopolitical issues, Marcus, together with the not the strongest of economies, um, has to drive these assets. Do you see them going any further? Maybe, um, but I don't. I think I think this is just a, a bit of a blip. I think uh, the, the self volatility angle, which has been uh, the theory theory for the last year or two, will come back pretty swiftly. And I, I personally think this is a bit of a, a minor uh, event in, in the longer term analysis. It's all very exciting. The media is whipping it up, but the <laughs> pr- practical reality is, as Donald Trump has made very clear, the second they retaliate, they're going to get it multiple back at them, and this is going to effectively expose the world that Iran is no longer the threat that people have once perceived it to be. And it cannot maneuver in the way that it once did. And that, so that the time is up as far as, as, as the external using proxy, Hezbollah, etc., etc., and even in Iraq. Uh, it, it's going to make it very difficult for it. And the sense is, is that I'm not saying it's regime change is coming in Iran, but the, people should be focusing much more on the crisis within Iran than its ability to actually be able to um, meaningfully uh, damage uh, certainly the US, that's so, for sure. So, Marcus, from a market's perspective then, do you think this, you, you describe this as a regional issue, and you think it remains so, even if we see direct conflict between the US and Iran simply because of the mismatch in in, in military capability? That, that That's the, the assessment the market should be making when thinking about whether this is going to be a global issue or not. Yeah, the JCPOA was, was dead and buried, you know, months and months ago when the US pulled out. The Europeans have been clinging on to it, the fanciful idea that, that they've got any import or leverage over, over Iran at all. The Iranians have, have laughed at the, uh, both at the Japanese Prime Minister and indeed the uh, Europeans at any attempt to try and get in the middle. Uh, it doesn't work like that, and it's not going to work like that. Saudi, Israel, US, and a vast majority of the other Arab countries are behind uh, a fairly cohesive coalition here against Iran, who have been called out as the bad guys in the region at the moment. And uh, all of a sudden, it, it's going to be illustrated that they have very little room to maneuver, and everything they do will come back at them multifold. And that's where I think it, you would expose uh, the weakness of the of the economy there because of the ongoing sanctions that the US have put on them for the last few years. All right, Marcus, thanks so much for joining us. Marcus Ashworth writes for Bloomberg Opinion. You can get his work and the work of his colleagues by typing O-P-I-N-Go on the Bloomberg Terminal.
Let's get an update on global news flow. Here's Leanne Gerrans. Good morning, Anna. Let's start here in the UK. Part of the Brexit logjam will start being cleared today when British MPs return from holiday to start debating Boris Johnson's divorce deal. Bloomberg's Brexit editor, Ed Evans, reports. Parliament returns on Tuesday and the government plans to get the withdrawal agreement bill, the actual piece of legislation taking Britain out of the EU on January 31st, through its remaining stages in the House of Commons by the end of the week. Unlike its predecessors, this bill is likely to enjoy a smooth passage, with Boris Johnson's government now enjoying an 80-seat majority. Opposition amendments to amend the bill are almost certain to fail. The legislation will then go on to the House of Lords, which, by convention, doesn't oppose government bills included in party manifestos. In London, I'm Edward Evans for Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Japan striking back following the daring escape of Carlos Ghosn. Prosecutors have issued an arrest warrant for Ghosn's wife, Carol. They say she gave false testimony in court after his escape last week. The former Nissan chairman said that family members were not involved in the matter. In southeastern Australia, firefighters are taking advantage of cooler weather to try to contain wildfires. At least 24 people have died so far. In New South Wales, about 1,600 homes have been destroyed. The fires are expected to burn for months to come. And finally, crossing over to Hong Kong, leader Carrie Lam says she hopes to work closely with China's new top official in the former British colony. Bloomberg's Ian Marlow has all the latest. Lam said Tuesday she would meet later this week with Luo Huining, who the Chinese government appointed Saturday to replace former Hong Kong liaison office director Wang Jimin. The choice of Luo, a Communist Party official known for executing President Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign, was seen as a signal of Beijing's intention to restore law and order in Hong Kong after more than six months of protests. In Hong Kong, Ian Marlow, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Global News 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrand. This is Bloomberg Anna. Thanks very much, Leanne. Now with your morning sports news, here's William Esler. Arsenal are through to the fourth round of the FA Cup after a 1-0 win over Leeds. However, the home side were completely outplayed during the opening half at the Emirates Stadium. Arsenal will travel to Bournemouth in the next round. Elsewhere in the draw, FA Cup holders Manchester City will host Fulham. The lowest ranked side definitely through Northampton, hard home to Derby. Last year's beaten finalists, Watford will play Wolves or Manchester United. That's if they get past Tranmere in their replay, while Liverpool go to Bristol City or Shrewsbury. Manchester City put their remarkable unbeaten League Cup record on the line tonight in the first leg of their semi-final. They haven't lost in the competition since October 2016, when they were knocked out by this evening's opponents, Manchester United. And England have a great chance of victory heading into the final day of the second test with South Africa. They have a lead of 311 runs in Cape Town, with the host resuming on 126 for two. Yesterday, England opener Dominic Sibley made his maiden test century, eventually finishing on 133 not out. Let's get the U.S. sports now with Pete Fox. Pete? Action from the Association in Orlando. The Nets dropped their sixth in a row. Spencer Dinwiddie and Joe Harris both posted 16. Tough night from the floor. DeAndre Jordan had just four points as the Nets shot 33% in the loss. Washington with back-to-back wins after beating the Celtics at the Capital One Arena. The loss for Boston snaps a three-game winning streak. Ish Smith with 27 in the win. And from the night on the ice at the Nassau Coliseum, Anders Lee broke a scoreless tie in the third to give the Islanders the 1-0 win over Colorado. I'm Pete Fox, Thatcher Bloomberg, NBC World Sports Update. That was your world sports update then from Pete Fox. Coming up on the program, we're going to be talking more about what's going on in uh, the world of Carlos Ghosn. He's going to give a press conference tomorrow, and we'll hear from our Daybreak Middle East anchor, Youssef Gamal al who is standing on the ground in Beirut in front of Ghosn's house, um, and ask what we should expect This is Bloomberg. Why has J.D. Power ranked Commonwealth Financial Network number one in independent advisor satisfaction among financial investment firms for the sixth straight time? We think it comes down to one thing. You. 
because it's your input and feedback that keeps us focused on what's most important to you and your clients and continually pushes us to be the best we can be. Maybe that's why we receive top marks in every category of the J.D. Power 2019 Advisor Satisfaction Survey. They named us number one in client support, number one in firm leadership, number one in operational support, number one in compensation, number one in professional development support, and number one in technology support. Ready to partner with the best? Call Commonwealth at 866-462-3638 or visit Commonwealth.com and feel the power. Member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. For 2019 J.D. Power Award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. No company wants to be involved in an international dispute. But when disagreements arise, you need expertise at your side. Take a closer look at ICDR, the International Center for Dispute Resolution. Backed by the longevity and strength of the American Arbitration Association, the ICDR is the world's leading provider of cross-border dispute resolution services, handling more cases than any other institution. Find out why global expertise matters. Visit ICDR.org. To buy your home, you became a house hunting ace. Learned about loans, scoured neighborhoods, and asked the right questions. Now you're queen of your castle. If you manage that, you can get your retirement plan on track. Visiting aceyourretirement.org can help. With 401k tips and smart saving strategies, you'll feel empowered to own your retirement like you own your home. Go to aceyourretirement.org. Because when it comes to clearing financial hurdles, you're an ace. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Influential conversations from Bloomberg Television. Here's Taylor Riggs. Alphabet was upgraded to a buy from a hold at Pivotal Research. Analyst Michael Levine wrote that after a critical foundation year in 2019, the narrative continues to improve in 2020 and beyond. So Michael Levine, he joins us now. Michael, give me your take. How do we get from a 1397 to a 1650 on the stock? I think one of the things that was most compelling to us, Taylor, was both the uh, the change in regime with Sundar basically stepping in as the CEO and chairman, but uh, but something that I, I think a lot of investors may have missed, his compensation agreement was filed with the SEC on December 20th, and what struck us 